Today's speaker, I think, needs no introduction. She's been around with the Saturday Sarge for a long, long time. She does her one-on-ones, and if you're not aware of those, um, are you doing that last week? <laughs> at the uh, the one on one the surgery yeah I'm going to be here uh, next Saturday at 5pm at the Pratt in Covent Garden we're going to take it over and I'm just going to sit there for as long as it takes to do a one on one consultation answering a question from absolutely everyone that turns up I'm not. it's not a shady selling process it's just one of my ways to actually give back and hopefully give you some useful information so if you want to pop down I will sit on that bar stool until I've spoken to everyone and it would be really great to see you there yeah, and um, I've got to say, Hayley has some great um, products out there. In fact, she helped me with her text uh, game ebook to land me the hottest day I've had, and that was this week on Monday. So please, thanks for that. Okay, no, I want to see the pictures and the I mean, despite the fact she fleeced me for drinks all night long, uh, that's not the oh. issue. But um, okay, so here we go, everybody. Here up for Hayley Quinn. Hey guys, um, first of all I'm going to acknowledge two things, and maybe three things actually. One, first did not tell me until two minutes ago this is going to be filmed. So that led to point two, which is maybe I should have prepared a little bit better for this talk. But it's my pleasure to be here and it's so nice as well to see the Saturday Sarge growing. Um, I'm a massive supporter of this because I'm a huge believer in real world practice. I think so many guys can get stuck on forums, stuck reading about stuff overwhelm themselves with information when this is the best place that you can learn and I think it's how I've learned, it's how all of the people that I've trained over the years through real life practice and real world experience. What I want to chat to you about today is really just a couple of tips for beginners, a couple of tips for intermediate and a couple of tips for guys that are already getting really good results because I know there's probably a huge range of ability out there. Some of you guys this might be the first time you've signed yourself up for this and I reward you for that, that's amazing. Some of you guys might have been veterans of Baz's group and have been here doing this for years and hopefully I'll give something for everyone. Um, and also I'm going to leave a bit of time or quite a substantial piece of time at the end for you to sling your questions at me, whether it's about female psychology, text game, technical details of your approaches, conversation skills, sex, I don't know, I'm happy to talk about anything. Um, but if you can just put those questions aside for one second, I will try and take as many of them as I can at the end. Um, so just to get started, I'm going to start in the beginning. Who here is, that's their first time they've done the Saturday Sarge? Raise your hand. No. Okay, awesome. I think first of all, congratulations, good decision, getting out and doing the real life practice. If I had to give a couple of tips for those guys that are just starting out, my main thing would be, do the easy thing, be lazy. You're already being proactive enough by getting out and doing the approaches. The approach is the important thing. But what you don't want to do is get bogged down with information, feeling like, oh God, you know, is this time to use a cube? Do I have to make loads of assumptions now? Uh, oh God, should I do this amazing transition? Did I, do I do the Yosha or the Yad stop? Over the car. Uh, <laughs> bog yourself down with too much information and you'll be inside your head and it will, it will um, curb your results. The best thing that you can do is just to take the easy option. If a girl has got a camera and she's taking pictures of her and her mates, if she's looking at a map, don't try and think of any like smart opener to use there. God has given you a gift. He's given you a gift which makes it easy to approach and say, hey, you know what, um, I couldn't help but notice uh, you checking out that map. Uh, me and my friends are Londoners and probably point you in the right direction. That is acceptable. If you get the result, you do not need to have insane openers or crazy lines or routines. It's more about doing the natural thing. So if you're starting out, do the easy thing. Also, when you're doing the easy thing and when you're starting out, make sure that you get someone's attention <laughs> before you keep, yeah, it's okay, we'll, we'll start it out, before you keep going. Um, when I work with guys, what I probably advise you to do first is if you haven't done the street approach, you know what, running after someone down the street, as amazing as it is when you get good at it, is freaking terrifying. And that's all right. I know no one is expected to turn up here to not feel sort of a little bit nervous, a little bit anxious about going ahead and doing that. If it's way outside your comfort zone, start with something that's slightly closer to your comfort zone and then take little incremental steps out of it. So for instance, if you see a girl like outside Topshop is one of my favorite spots, girls will tend to be like stood around there, leaning with their backs up against the wall waiting for their friends. Go stand nearby, mirror their body language, look like you're there anyway, you know, check your phone, these things are amazing for that. Once you've done that and you're in their proximity, 
say, hey, pause, and then try and strike up a conversation that way. If you want to practice doing a street approach and you want to get the body language down, you might find it easier to begin by asking for directions and just learn getting used to the fact that you're approaching someone on the street. In your head, you might be thinking, this all sounds fucking lame. That's not what I saw Yad doing. But you know what? He had to start somewhere. And I've known Yad and I've known Andy Osha since pre-game, pre-game PG, when, we were, when none of us were into it, going back like five, six years, and everyone started somewhere. And there is absolutely no shame in not feeling like running after someone and doing a direct street approach as your first approach. That is cool. Do what's comfortable for you and work in increments to increase your comfort zone. Um, so those are my couple of tips. So mainly, do the easy thing. If you're beginning, build confidence, keep practicing. Don't throw yourself so in at the deep end that you get put off from trying ever again. Build stuff up gradually and gently. And the most important thing if, as a beginner is to make sure that you get someone's attention before you continue speaking to them. There is no bigger diss if you're speaking to a girl and she's checking her phone or is turned away from you. You're just lowering your value and all those good lines and all those good ideas and all that assumption making and clever conversational techniques that you've been using, they don't count if she's not giving you her full attention. So just like your teacher did at school, if a person hasn't got their full focus on you, you just stop talking and you wait for them to give your focus and your attention because you deserve that from people. That's just a few tips for beginners. I want to give uh, hopefully a couple more pieces of advice to people that have been doing the Saturday Sarge for a while. Um, so a few things that I'm going to go through are going to be how to deal with things when you get a girl who does something like a common response. In this area, I don't know if you noticed, we have Pineapple Dance Studios just around the corner, about a street away. So probably what you're going to get is you might get a lot of girls here that say they're dancers or say they're models. Like, Half, I swear, 50% of the women in London are models of some capacity and will tell you that. If you give a standard response or the response that all the other guys give, you're doing nothing to differentiate yourself. I see so often um, men over-validating women. And you can do that just by how you deliver your opening line. It's great to use a direct line if that's your style and you feel cool with that. But if you say, oh my god, you look so amazing, and you put all this emphasis on it in your voice, you're rewarding her twice. You're rewarding her with what you're saying and how you're saying it. So try to deliver your direct openness a bit more deadpan. Be more like a social judge. Be like, yeah, I just um, had to stop you and say you look really lovely today. Be cool and calm and confident in giving that compliment. Don't give it in a needy way. Similarly, if a girl tells you that she's a dancer or she's a model or she does something that's like the equivalent, I suppose, of a girl DHV, like a girl boasting to you, I think, well, I don't know, what do you think? I think the worst response in that case would be to say, oh my God, that's amazing, it's really good. Be, ca be wary of smiling and nodding too much and being too encouraging. You maybe have to be like that at the start when you're just trying to get her to stop and build some comfort. But if you stick in that level of communication, you're only going to be a friend. Women like guys that have strong opinions. We actually like to be challenged and called out on our shit a lot of the time. So if a girl is happy and comfortable talking to you, maybe her legs are crossed, she appears relaxed, she's engaged in the conversation, then you, you know you have to start mixing it up a little bit. So be a bit more challenging and move away from giving the compliments or saying the things that you think she'll have heard tons of times before. Maybe with a, if a girl's a model, you could comment um, that she must be very well motivated. If she's a dancer, you know, oh, you must be really well motivated to do that. I imagine it's a very competitive industry. You know, so you're, you're almost pushing back then. You're making her justify herself a bit. You're not accepting what she says. You're not rewarding her just through virtue of who she is. You've got to come into these interactions when you start getting a bit better from the perspective of, you know what? I'm a fucking worthwhile guy. I'm really smart. I'm really nice. I'm cool. This girl, so what if she's a dancer? What if she's a model? So what if she's hot? They're, they're, you just walk down that street. There are millions of them. Do not over-validate on the grounds of a girl's looks. Instead, if you can, draw everything back to her personal quality and her personal attributes. This may seem um, strange to you guys, but because uh, I know that when you approach a woman, you probably approach her because you think she's quite hot, maybe for practice. But that's the main reason, right, behind approaching physical appearance. A woman, for some reason in our heads, we do not feel comfortable with the concept a lot of the time of you just approaching us and just wanting to speak to us and just wanting to date us because you think we're hot. 
a woman wants to feel like there's something about her, some mystical cosmic thing that caused you to speak to her, okay? Which is why, even if you approached her because her legs look really, really good, you have to try and turn it from that position of being direct and doing a direct opener into connecting with her as a human being. So what you need to do is you need to root out her personal qualities and her personal attributes. So whatever she's saying about her hobbies or her interests or what she's getting up to, a good response is you should say, okay, that's interesting. I'm curious because you didn't look like the kind of girl that studied physics, so you've clearly got kind of two sides to you going on here. There's a little bit more to you than the average person. That's interesting. So kind of suggest to her through what you're saying that you see something in her, that you get her X factor. It's not that you've approached 20 girls today and she was the one that stopped and chatted to you the most. There was some X factor quality. If you look to people's qualities, this is the easiest way to move between um, different topics of conversation as well. So for instance, if she tells you um, about a holiday she went on, maybe she went backpacking, and you can say, oh, okay, this girl is a bit more adventurous than your normal girl that just goes to Spain or Ibiza. Um, that adventurous quality, you can then imagine how she interacts with the rest of her life. If she's adventurous in terms of her holiday choices, she probably takes bolder career choices, and if she's not, she should be. She probably is more of a natural <laughs> risk taker in life. She's probably the kind of person that's a bit disorganised and will go out with her, met and her friends last minute. Try to understand who she is as a person, and it'll allow you to move through different topics of conversation. This is actually an analogy that the juggler taught me. I used, this is where my career started out in New York a few years ago. Very valuable piece of advice. I'm going to absolutely credit him for this one. He said that um, a person, you can try and imagine them like they're a bottle of water. The, real, the person, the real person, their personality is the water inside. The bottle is the topic. The topic of what you're talking about is never that important. If you can understand who they are, if you can lock down whether they're a calm person, an outgoing person, adventurous, shy, spontaneous, crazy, creative, straight-laced, if you can do that, if you can figure out who they are as an individual, it'll allow you to seamlessly move between different topics of conversation. So no matter what you're talking about, draw it back to who they are as an individual. And a great way to do this is by starting to talk about people yourself. Um, I bet you guys, when you're out there on the streets, you might find that you, you start chatting to some girls and it, you get like, it's like blood out of a stone. Like nothing, they're not really venturing too much forth in the conversation. Now, I'm going to go out there and say, that doesn't mean she doesn't like you. That means that she could be shy. Women are not programmed to be amazing at talking to strangers in the street. We find it quite a stressful experience as well. So if you can make it easy on us, the easiest way for you to do that is to go first. If you want to know something about another person, give your own opinion, give your own perspective. So tell them a little bit about your life and always centre your discussions around people. I'm going to give you two examples of this, of conversation topics that you will find if you're kind of in, in, in the intermediate stage of game will come up time and time again. The first is travel. You might be talking about holidays, it's the summer. Uh, the bad way to talk about holidays is to talk about them too logically. I once worked with a guy and I asked him where he was from and he said, uh, oh, kind of hungry. And I was like, oh, what's it like there? And he said, oh, it's about 25 kilometers north, northwest of Budapest. <laughs> and th those weren't the details I was looking for. You know, I was looking for him to paint a beautiful picture there of what his, what his town and his culture is like. Um, so what I would say is, even if you've been traveling somewhere, if you've been to a different part of the world, if she hasn't been there, and you list a bunch of places, you said, oh, you know, I flew into Santa Monica, and then went to Santa Barbara, and Napa Valley, and San Francisco, and then Vancouver, all up the west coast of America. It's, it's obviously cool, but unless she's been there, there are no reference points in her mind for her to be able to easily continue the conversation on. Much better is if you can imagine that you're almost like looking at a photo of, uh, of your holiday, and you describe a specific experience, like, oh my God, like the best, the best seafood I ever had was this one time in Napa Valley and I was sat out um, outside in one of those little cute outdoor bistros. You know, it's kind of like the ones you get in Lutz squares around London and they serve. And go into that level of specific detail. Talk about the friends you made when you were traveling. This is stuff that's going to be much easier for her to relate to you on because people know people and they understand situations like that much more easily than logistical details. 
Um, and one more example of that is if you're talking about your work life. I bet tons of you guys, you might do jobs that I wouldn't, I wouldn't know what they were. Like, I have a weird career. Like, I get my career, I don't get analysts, strategists, engineers, IT stuff. Like, it doesn't really make, it doesn't really have many reference points. So I could be enjoying you and I could like you, but if I don't understand where you're coming from and I don't know how to continue this conversation, unless I happen to teach conversation skills, I might be a bit stuck. In that case, if you're talking about your work, consider talking about your colleagues, talk about whether you've got a good office dynamic, if you've got a, a tyrannical boss, what happened at the last Christmas party. Think about things, if there's any flirtation in the office, always bring your conversations back to people and human beings and you're going to find that there's much more easier cross-reference points for her to continue on the conversation. Um, okay, I'm just going to give you a couple more pointers um, for guys that are been doing this a while, you're getting good results, just to help tune those up a little bit. And then I might, I might ask guys to stop recording, and, but after that I'll take questions from you and I'll try and hang around as long as I can after that. So if you guys are out there, what I've been mainly talking about so far is if you're just beginning or if you're in that kind of intermediate stage where you're just trying to hold the set better, you're trying to have improved conversations. What I want to talk about now is more like you're having improved conversations and you're getting to that stage where you're chatting to girls on quite a regular basis for like five to ten minutes. This is getting to a really, really sweet spot here. You've made them comfortable. Hopefully you're able to challenge them a bit, pull them up on their opinions, tease them about being a model, ask them about how they're feeling. If you're at that phase, we're thinking about closing. Now, I also do a lot, um, as Faz said, about text game. And the text game and what happens after you get to the number does relate to the process that you got the number under. I know, and I was on um, a podcast earlier today actually talking about how mobile phone technology has changed dating. And the way it's changed dating is that people flake. People can flake so much more easily now. And I think, unfortunately, a cold approach, like on the street, is one of the, the times where you're going to get the most flakes, usually, because you haven't met someone through a social circle. They feel no bond towards you, necessarily. So you're going to get a drop off, but there are things you can do to combat that. The first thing you have to understand is the time of the time that you spend with a girl. The more time you can spend with her, to an extent, the better. So if there's an opportunity to go for an instant date, do the instant date. I know it can feel like, oh, you know what? It's way easier and much less pressure to ask for a number. So I'm just going to do that. I'm going to exit after five minutes. I, I can understand that. If you've got the opportunity to do a 20 minute coffee though, you've got to know, if she sits down and gets a drink with you for 20 minutes, she's going to feel a fuckload guiltier about not answering your text afterwards. So that's important to remember. And you know what, it doesn't disclude you getting the number. If you want to go for an instant date, you can just say, hey, you know what, it's good ch chatting to you, but I'll do it in the street. Um, I've got like five minutes before I have to go meet my friends. Let's go grab a drink. And you know what, if she says no, it's unlikely that she'll say no because I don't know you. A lot of the time she'll probably say, oh no, you know what, I'm a bit busy. Luckily women are polite. At what point you can say, that's okay, well let me get your number then and we'll do this another time. And you've seamlessly set yourself up for another date in the future. But it's worth trying to get that big sale before you drop down. It's always easier to start at a high point of negotiation. It's like you always, in negotiation, you always ask for more than what you want or what you expect to get. If you get it, it's nice. If not, you've got room to be bartered down. So it's trying to go for the instant date if, you're, if your good game is solid. If not, go move down towards the number. Um, I think that's really important. I think also what to understand to combat flakes is to get some kind of degree of emotional investment. By talking about people, that's always going to help. But just like um, how I said going for an instant date is like the biggest sell you can get. It's like instant date, number, Facebook, probably. That's probably like the, the running order of the order of goodness that you can get things in. Similar things happen in conversation in terms of emotional investment with a woman. Um, I'm going to give you an example. You could say, oh, so what do you do for fun? girl might say, oh, you know, I do a bit of modelling, uh, uh, I, I, I keep fit, go to the gym, and I like cooking. She could give you a list, essentially, and at that point, you could, you could to choose to make a commonality and find a place of agreement based on the list. You could go, that's good, I do modelling too, or I do cooking, and that's fine. You know, like, you've made a connection there, 
But you've got to understand that that connection is relatively superficial. The first answer people give you when you're chatting to them is not as good as the third answer and the fifth answer. So instead, if she gives you a list of things or a very vague details about what she likes, try and get her to explain that a little bit more. Pick up on one of those items in the list. Oh, all right, so you, so you like to uh, you like to work out? You know, when I work out, I do a bit of like um, a bit of kickboxing. I try and get down to the gym a couple of times a week. You kind of look like you're going to be more of a yoga person, though. And she'll be like, yeah, I like to do yoga. And I'll be like, oh, wow, when I finished doing my kickboxing, I always feel like this massive like release of energy. It really helps keep my mind focused. I think that that, that might be the same for you. She, and, and what you want to eventually do is get her to describe how she feels when she's doing the yoga. It asks her, oh, how does that make you feel? Or, but you want to wrap that up in a way that's not so obvious, so you don't sound like a psychiatrist. So you probably say... Uh, you know what? When I when I want to relax, I do this. I'd imagine it's the same when you do that. Um, and what you're aiming to do is to connect on personal qualities. Again, connect on those emotions. Like connect when she feels relaxed. What makes her feel happy? What makes her feel like she's having fun? And what you're doing then is you're forming a much deeper connection. And if you go, I like yoga. You like kickboxing. Great. We both like sport. That's all right. What's much better is if. You both do sport as a means to relax and escape the pressures of the modern world. You know, think about forming those deeper connections. If you get that emotional investment and you get the investment of the time, the number is much less likely to flake. Um, saying that, you can still um, decrease your chance of the number flaking again by not going by not uh, going too fast on the text messages. I think a common error would be a couple of things. Don't ask for the date straight away. You want to check that number is real and that she's going to respond. And not only is she going to respond, she's going to write you decent lengths of responses. She's not just going to say, yeah, fine, smiley face. That doesn't count. She's just responding then possibly because she's bored. She's not really investing anything emotionally. In the text exchange, you want to wait for her to be texting back messages that are of kind of equalish length to yours and when she's opening new avenues for conversation she's telling you something about her day that you didn't ask about she's asking a question about you when you get this response though the timing is crucial now to not go and have a, a 10 20 message long conversation before you ask for the date she'll wonder where it's going and the mystery will die down also you're all busy guys go for the date pretty soon as soon as you start noticing that investment you're like okay cool well love to hear more about that but i'm more of a face-to-face -face than a text person let's catch up for cocktails next week don't ask her when she's free or what she's up to give her a couple of options say tuesday and thursday nights are good for me make it more about you also um on the texting side of things, make I said this is going to sound like a, this is going to sound like an innuendo. Just warning you now. Make the fruit quite low hanging. What I mean by that is, I I once knew a client, and uh, he as a second date for a girl invited her to go to Paris with him. And he drove an Aston Martin. He was like a millionaire. And as a woman, before that situation occurs to you, you kind of get oh that would be so romantic. That'd be amazing. In reality, it freaks them out. Like, just, you know, much easier. If a girl is seeming uncertain, or you think the number was a bit flaky, or you're not sure it's that solid, if you say, like, a quick cocktail after work, or a quick coffee, she's going to be able to rationalise that in her mind of, well, if he is a psycho and I made a huge mistake here, then it's only an hour of my time. It's going to be a lot easier for her to commit to. And when, but that doesn't mean that when she's on that date, you can't then stay and spend all evening with her. But it's just like sales again. If you can make a person make an initial investment, an initial commitment, just to meet you for that one drink, if it's going well on the night, then just say, you know what, I'm a bit hungry. Let's go grab a bite to eat. And so then you can gradually work your way up through the evening. Had you asked her in advance, would you be up for meeting up with me for a drink, then a bite to eat, then a few more drinks, then possibly coming back to my place? She'll say no. If you say, how about a quick drink after work, and things just happen, and you can sell up on the date, much, much, much more effective. So if you're doing your, so to prevent flakes, just to recap, time is really, really important. Spend longer with them. If you can get the number mid-flow in the set, and then just keep chatting for a bit, so it doesn't look like you just went in there like a member of the SAS to get one particular thing, and then you're off, that's great. 
If you can get an instant date, fantastic. Um, try and go for emotional investment. Dig down, ask it, you know, try and talk about feelings and emotions and people. Best way to do that is usually to talk from your own perspective first. Then in terms of timing, text relatively quickly, maybe over the next day or two. But you wait until you're getting an invested response from her, a response that's pretty long, that offers new topics of conversation. Then you get on the date, set the date soon as well. Don't set it two weeks in advance because you're, you've got to appreciate your chances of that date going on are just going to decrease over time because she'll forget how much she enjoyed chatting to you. So get her on the date within a few days if possible and you do that by telling her that you have one or two days free and these are the best days and times for you but make it something that's easy for her to commit to like a drink or coffee after work, do your tough work upselling after that. Um, so that's kind of what I wanted to chat to you about today. I don't want to bog you down with too much information because I'm a huge believer that the best way to learn is out there. It's by doing real life practice, real workshops, things that are going to give you that experience. Don't bog yourself down with information. Don't overburden yourself and feel like, oh God, I need to do all this kind of stuff now. Should I be hypnotizing her? What should I be doing? <laughs> do the easy thing. Be kind to yourself. You've already done a fucking amazing thing, a motivated thing, a taking action kind of thing by turning up here today and saying, you know what, I'm going to give it a go. I'm going to go out there and do that. That is the most valuable step that you could have taken. That Just that one action is worth a thousand hours of reading about forums of this stuff. So you're all amazing. I'm going to be hanging around here afterwards and hopefully taking some questions for you guys. Best of luck. Yeah. Baz wants to ask me something. Um, <laughs> shall we just do some questions now? Yeah, and cool. Big launch oh yeah, the big launch. Yeah, okay, perfect. Yeah. Okay, so questions first. Anything. It doesn't have to be about, the, it could be about street game, it could be about women, generally. I am one, so I, I know something about it. Uh, I know for one. Hey. The sticking point I have is I'll go on a date and I'll get to, it's, maybe it just goes on for ages, it goes for three hours, and then it kind of ends on a low. Should I be cussing, should I be judging on the date, maybe an hour and a half in, just going really well, to say, before we go off somewhere, do something else, because then you don't get that lull at the end, just kind of like walking to the station, and then she, what she remembers me by is being a bit boring at the end. Yeah, I think, <laughs> well, I think you have to make a judgment call. And the first date is, a re is probably the trickiest one because uh, you obviously if it's going really, 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 really well and she's going to come home with you. You want to like, she's all over you. You want to be in it to win it. However, if she's not undecided and you, force, and you kind of instigate a kiss and she's not 100% ready for that, then a lot of the time that can cause women to never see you ever again because they'll feel like they've overcommitted. So sometimes playing it a bit cooler can be really advantageous. So yeah, if you're feeling like it's going pretty well now, but I'm tired, I'm running low on energy, I'm running low on topics of conversation, then that could be a valuable thing to do. And you know what, on the walk to the, 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 walk to the tube station, which is always like, living in London, we have like the least romantic goodbyes possible getting onto the Northern Line or something. Um, I think a great thing to do is you don't actually have to kiss her at the end of the day to create that um, seductive atmosphere. Sometimes if you kiss a woman and she's not 100% in the same headspace as you, she'll feel like, oh, shit, I, shouldn't, I didn't really feel comfortable doing that. He'll probably want to have sex with me next time. I better just not see him ever again. Um, so a great way to do it is, I'm going to give you, you can do a bit of an example. Okay, way. <laughs> um, a good thing to do is if you're saying goodbye to a woman, if you put your hands on the hips and you hold her in, and then you just hold her like that and say, it's been really good seeing you. And really good to see you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but by holding her in that, that on the hips, in that kind of close physical proximity, making heavy eye contact, slowing your voice down and saying, you know, it's, it's been really good to see you today, and then walking off that creates that sexual tension that women are always, always, always talking about. So a lot of the time, that can be more effective a cliffhanger than going for a kiss that she's not 100% ready for. Any, any other questions? Yeah. Yeah, um, cool. So, I mean, I went on a date last Sunday, um, and I thought I was um, portraying enough sort of sexual interest in the girl. Uh, like, so a constant sort of like, um, sort of touching on her thighs and hips and everything. And then um, a couple of days after the uh, after the date, she then takes me back saying that you know you're just like you're too shy and everything. And 
I was thinking, well, what do you want me to do? Like, sort of attack you or something? Or what? <laughs> <laughs> like, how, I, mean, I mean, we sort of like kissed at the end of the day as well. Okay. But just, you know, didn't obviously click. But how, I mean, how much is... This, this reminds me of this really uh, fa- funny sketch that you guys should all watch by, uh, I think it's called by uh, Louis C.K. It's called uh, Rape. Uh, <laughs> Google it. Um, it kind of explains the, the funny female psychology on this one. I think a key thing to understand is that just how women and men communicate sexual interest and seduction is just very different. So men are much more physical. You know, we like to, you, well, you like to, I'm not a guy, you like to look at things and touching is communicating that for you. Whilst for women, sometimes that seduction is a slightly different process. So if she's a girl and she's very out, if this was she quite an outgoing woman or yes, she's she shy, or she was quite eccentric. Okay. Um, yeah, she, she was very outgoing. Yeah, because yeah. I, I usually find that women that are more eccentric and more outgoing, they tend to like being challenged a little bit more, and so sometimes you can create that sexual tension by not just through physical touch, though that's important. But by challenging her on her opinion, saying, really, why is that? And you showing maybe signs of disinterest in her. And then and, and she's touching you a lot. Also remember to keep escalating your touches. Don't stick at the same level if you keep getting a green light. Like a green light is not a red light. A red light, she, she pulls a funny face or she moves away or she tenses up. Um, you'd start probably just as you probably did by touching the forearms. I kind of pressure went down. Yeah, and then you went probably to here, and then you probably went to the back, and then the hips. Yeah, but I didn't get any of that back. So, okay. So that's quite so that's kind of... I wasn't, I was getting, it wasn't, even, it wasn't a red light, but it was, it was like sort of amber. <laughs> <laughs> amber. <laughs> and some women do enjoy being, um, being caveman, but I think sometimes if it's a first date, as of just like with this guy, you can create the sexual tension in other ways and leave something leave something hanging until the next time that you see her, until you have the logistics. If it goes really well, then you can say, Oh, you know, we should go down to Borough Market, get some get some new you know, get some food there and pick it up at my place. And she agrees to that, it's a done deal. But I think at that initial um, in that initial date, probably what's safer than trying to like go, Oh, I'm a man, I'm touching her, I'm communicating, seductive seduction. Sometimes pausing, sometimes challenging, sometimes looking at women and saying, you know, something, something interesting about you, it's different. Can't put my finger on it. Oh, or when she laughs, you know, saying, I can say you've got a different side to you. I want, I want to see more of that side. So it's basically, I would look for your going forward. I'd look to like challenging, uh, teasing, more kind of like uh, deep rapport connection kind of techniques. I think that will do a lot to communicate that seduction to her rather than just relying on physical escalation because women just wired slightly differently. Great. Okay. Uh, should we take the last question? Is anyone Any questions? More question? No. Uh, yes, yes, excellent. I have a question on um, when, you, when you open and you've got into the conversation. Yeah. Uh, it's just like, uh, I mean, half of it's just your own, own anxiety about sort of reading the woman's interest level. Okay. So I don't know if you can give, give any tips or... Yeah, I think the most important thing is that you um, you stay present in the moment of the set and also for, to an extent, and this is how really bad, try not to worry too much about her level of interest. Worry more about what you want. If she's standing there and she's talking to you and she's not moving anywhere, you still that, that means she's interested enough, hopefully. Um, the moment that she'd be disinterested usually is if she's looking away or she gets her phone out or she starts fidgeting or you notice her feet pointing in a different direction. Those are big signs. At what point you can say, you know what, I'm really, uh, you know, I've got to go, I'm running late, yeah, yeah. let me get your number and you can cut the set short then. Right. But until that point in time, focus on what you want right. and you know what, if she gives you a funny look or something, just call it out. Say, yeah. like, I like how you're, you've got this kind of like a bemused look upon your face. You know, I, th- I thought you'd... Uh, have this stuff happen to you all the time. You know, try and be resonant and try and react and respond to her. Also, you know, if she gets her, her phone out or something, say, I love how you're multitasking. That's kind of impressive. Cool it out. The second that you react and respond to her and you say what's kind of going on in your mind, just removes the pressure tremendously on you. And until that point, try and come from the belief point of, you know what, I'm a cool guy. This is going to go great. I want to get her number. She's going to like me. Yeah, a bit of arrogance goes a long way. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much for that.
solid, constant stream of consciousness. <laughs> um, we're going to have to get you back again. But great, thanks, Gun. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so um, just to recap, I think uh, make girls feel comfortable on the street, connect with them, and paint a picture, I think is the main message. Yeah, paint a specific picture, worry more about what you want, be okay, be in the moment, give yourself small goals, um, and make things easy for yourself. Basically, my, my, my main topic for discussion was today, take the easy option, whether it's like the easy opener, the easy date for you to set up, or the easy way that you can kind of demonstrate your value and do what makes you feel comfortable. Do that. Don't bog yourself down in theory and try and do tons of tricks and techniques that are unnecessary sometimes. Sometimes simple is best and most effective. Great. Um, Hayley does uh, offer her services. You can get to her website at hayley-quinn.com. Or hayleyquinn.com. Either way, it all works. Great. And she runs these seminars, which I found were really fascinating. It's about physical escalation. And if you think you've got that down, it's a great uh, bit of reassurance that you're on the right tracks as well and found that really helpful. Yeah, and just so you know, any of you guys, if you hit me up through my site, if te you know, text game for numbers and stuff on the street is pretty important. I'm giving away free tasters to people of my ebook, so you don't have to buy it afterwards, you can just take the free test a taster, see if it works for you, like Faz, and it's helpful. And always shoot me a line if you want any free advice on anything as well. I, even if I can't help you personally, I'll try and point you to good resources that are in the right direction. Great. 